Hey guys, welcome to the studio. I've been super busy the past two weeks. Today, finally a video again. I'm stoked to talk to you again, share with you some music production knowledge. Before we get started with the entirety of my master chain, I'm mastering my songs myself since a year. I will share everything because I haven't done, done that in a while. How I master, what kind of plugins and settings I use. But I would also love to pitch to you my newest release. That's the one where I will showcase the mastering. It was released on Friday. It's called Violated with my new project against the AI. The song before that went to spot number five of the Melodic Techno and House charts. This one right here, I don't know. It's up to you if you like it, if you want to buy it, if you want to DJ it, play it in the club, then please do so. It really means the world to me. Um, also, the previous song was supported by Tiesto supported by Oliver Heldens. They both played it on radio and on stage. And then a couple of the Afterlife guys um, played it live. There are a bunch of clips that are on, on Instagram. It's really amazing to see my own song being performed in front of people and how they react to it. That's just what I love the most about music making. But yeah, enough talking. Let me open up the Logic Project, show you the master chain. And again, if you want to support me in any kind of way, First link in the description, the new song, get it on Beatport. Highly appreciate it. By the way, one more quick thing. Everyone that supports me, I feel so thank you. So I want to give something back to you. So everyone that gets the song on Beatport sends me the invoice. Email is also linked down below in the description. Will get my 50 kicks. I have like a kick folder, my private one that I've never shared with anyone ever before. But those are the kicks that I'm using right now for all kinds of electronic dance music that I make. And the kick is usually like 90% of, of the mixing of the production. So if you, have, if you have a good kick, maybe I'll do a full kick video tomorrow. I got a little more time now that the song is out and I have another month or a little more until the next song. But yeah, I opened up Violated. That's the song that is out since a couple of days. And it has 37 tracks. Wait, let me screen record. Very straightforward melodic techno track. If you want to listen to the full thing, link in the description. We'll start with the channel cue that is on here. It's a safety, safety low cut at just below 30 hertz. Pretty steep. Something I can recommend, especially for, for more like pop music uh, for the club. You can also go lower to 25, but everything honestly below 25 is not really audible. Even on a big club system, it just gets really muddy. Everything shakes. There's nasty stuff happening. Just get rid of it because the less space you have in a song, the more space you have in the mix to actually make it louder. Second, another EQ cutting really high at 130 and this one as you can see right here is only sides so it makes sure that uh, the side signal that is left and right is gone below 130 hertz just to make sure especially for club music that the bass part is mono you never know how the speakers are set up mono just sounds punchier straighter there is no phasing issue nothing like that the next part I got Gulfo's mastering on there. Let's maybe play it a little. It brightens up the song quite a bit. I, I was mixing it and I had the feeling that it's overall a little dull and the, the mids are not present enough. Sometimes it just happens to me because because uh, I, I I like it very dark and moody, but it was already a little too much. So um, Gulfos basically is a plugin that makes it sound good <laughs> in a nutshell. It, it uses like a reference signal and and tries to make the the song pushed more towards like a neutral kind of sound. And with recovery, tame, bias, and brighten and boost, you can set it up. Also right here, the low end is excluded. It was um, making too much on the low end and made the, the low end kind of move, uh, pump in, in a strange way. 
So yeah, it's, it's adding basically a couple of mids. I could also use uh, an EQ and, and boost those frequencies, but here it's working in a more intelligent, reactive way. I really like it. Then we got OTT, which I actually didn't use on here. I tried it with just 8%, all standard settings, 8%. Um, it usually pushes the top frequencies and mid frequency. It pushes everything in an extreme way. Sometimes I listen to other people's songs and I have the feeling I, I, I'm missing this little push. And then I just put on OTT like 5 to 15% and it does exactly that. It's not, it's not, <laughs> the, I, I think like a standardly trained mixing mastering engineer wouldn't advise you to use it. But um, it just gives you that sound that is modern at the moment. So try it out. Like the end result counts how you get there. No one cares. Standard clip. You can use any kind of clipping plugin. That's more a technical thing for, for getting the loudness. You're chopping off frequencies that are sticking out too much that would otherwise trigger the limiter too much. So it just gets equal. Just be careful if you chop too much you'll be able to hear um, the, the distortion and artifacts. Um, hearing a little of it, it's not a big deal because most people don't even have the speakers to hear it. If you hear it on your speakers, on headphones, because you're a trained music producer, yes, maybe, but most people won't notice it. here in this song at this spot it's set so slightly that it's not even like the bit you just heard it's, it's not chopping anything uh, there are other sections on the song where it might um, grab one or two peaks so it's really like a, a technical thing you could apply more now it's really cutting off transients Still fine. I mean, I, I got the loudness uh, without it, and, and that's usually better, but if you have to, um, consider it. And then last but not least, the Pro-L Fab Filter. I promised three extra tips. One of them would be to actually have the limiter on first. Don't have it first in the chain, but put it on at the bottom of your chain, but apply it first. Because the limiter changes the most. You're mixing everything into the limiter. Everything you do before the limiter affects the limiter. So have it on there. That's the first thing I do. Limiter on, get the right loudness, more or less. And then I start applying other stuff. We're quite loud here. Uh, I think it was like minus 7.5 um, RMS, and it's not it's not hitting the limiter that hard. That's because I did already a bunch of stuff in the, in the mixing stage, but that's maybe something for for a mixing video. But you you need to control the peaks already beforehand a lot of. That's uh, oh wait I forgot the solid bus. There is a compressor, but it's also just doing a tiny bit. Maybe 2 dB of gain reduction. It's just like when the kick hits, it pushes it a little down, makes everything a little more uh, equal in volume. And then the limiter pushes it like the, the last bit. If you're at a point where you put the limiter on and you don't get the loudness that you want to get, and the limiter starts distorting already too much, then you need to go back to the mixing stage. Then you probably have too much kick in there too much bass or too much of both of them. Mixing, mastering is always a compromise. You have a certain amount of space to put elements in there. And if one of them is really big and takes away a lot of space, it will leave the other elements only a little tiny bit of space. The song will sound very muddy, very dull, very over. Like usually most people put in too much bass actually. So reduce the, the bass amount a little. What also helps us using a Magic Q to compare it to other songs and then you'll see 
where the frequencies are too much. But it's it's usually below 300 hertz. That's where all of the energy sits. Another really, really, really important tip I got is um, I learned this actually from a professional mastering engineer that does nothing else. He chops up the song in, in different sections. I was a bit lazy on this one right here. I did it in the project. So the very last track right here has automation on it. And every time there is a break, I lowered the volume by 3 dB because when you compress the entire song, the quiet parts get louder, the breaks get louder, and then the drops don't hit that hard. So I lowered them by 3 dB to have a higher impact. The mastering guy, he actually has uh, another program. He chops up the parts and doesn't automate them. He actually, and that's another pro tip, he actually masters the sections of the song differently. He crossfades them, puts the master chain not on the master output, it, it, it puts it on the track itself. So you can have different master chains of, on different parts of the song and then he's just volume crossfading them to uh, have even more control. A breakdown section doesn't need to, to have like to be that limited and clipped and everything. It can have a lot more dynamic. It needs to be quieter. Maybe in a pop song, the bridge needs to have a different feel. Maybe the bass in the bridge is a real bass, and then the rest of the song, it's, it's a synthesizer. So he actually chops up the track. Every individual part. That's also why he's Grammy nominated, probably. So th those are the things that usually make, make the track shine a little more. Treat the individual sections as separate songs, because they are, especially for pop music, very different and need very different uh, approaches to them. So I hope this helped. This is my master chain, plus like some tips, tricks on top. It's easy. I would highly suggest you try to master your own tracks, even if at the end someone else masters it, if a label does it, or, or like the, the master engineer that you choose, I would still master it myself, because the, the process of mastering will show you where your track just lacks um, the possibilities for the mastering engineer. At least have a limiter on there and listen to it limited at a, like a, a standard volume within the style of music you make. And if you can't get there, something is probably overpowering your mix and, and muddying it up. So definitely try that out. If you got any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you want to support me, my music, it's linked down below in the description. Again, everyone, that supports me as a thank you, you'll get 50 kicks, the best kicks I can offer you, the ones that I've been working on for 10 years that just make um, mixing, producing for me so much easier because if you have a kick that is controlled in the right way, has the right amount of click and bass, it's easier to work and add other parts to it. So if you're interested in receiving those 50 kicks, get the song, send me the invoice to the email down below. That's basically it. See you hopefully tomorrow again for another video. I'll try to make up for the videos I couldn't make in the past two weeks because I was so busy, but there is exciting stuff uh, happening with this new project that I can't wait to share. Thanks all for watching.